Welcome to Stoichiometry. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can use balanced equations to determine chemical quantities. Stoichiometry refers to the calculation of chemical quantities in a chemical reaction. So here we have a chemical reaction represented by this equation. We have nitrogen plus hydrogen yields ammonia. Now a balanced equation such as this one tells us the relative amount of each substance in the reaction. We can tell that there's one nitrogen molecule for three hydrogen molecules, and that will give us two ammonia molecules. Those relative amounts, one nitrogen for three hydrogen yielding two ammonia, can also be represented as moles. One mole of N2 will react with three moles of H2 to produce two moles of ammonia. So this equation, in representing these relative amounts, the one nitrogen for three hydrogen and two ammonia works just like a recipe does. So let's take a look at a recipe. Here we have an example recipe for some cake mix. It says you have one package of cake mix and one and a half cups of water and one stick of butter and three eggs mixed together and cooked will give you 18 servings of cake. We could actually write this as an equation. The one packet of cake mix plus the 1.5 cups of water plus the one stick of butter plus the three eggs yields 18 cake. So if I want nine servings, that's half of what this recipe makes. So I can use half of all the amounts. I can use half of the package of cake mix. I can use 0.75 cups of water. I can use half a stick of butter. And I can use 1.5 eggs. I just scaled down this entire recipe because I wanted less servings. I wanted half as many servings, so I scaled down the ingredients by one half. This should make sense because if I want half the amount of cake, I should use half the amount of ingredients. Now let's take this idea and bring it back to that balanced equation making ammonia. So I have one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen gives me two moles of ammonia. I can scale this up and down as well however much I want. If I want to make six moles of ammonia, if this is my goal, Okay, that's three times as much as what this equation tells us we'll make. That means I need three times as much for the ingredients or the reactants. So instead of needing three moles of hydrogen, I will need nine moles of H2. And instead of needing one mole of nitrogen, I'll need three times that, or three moles of nitrogen. And that will give me the six moles of ammonia that I want. So I have this ability to scale up or scale down. If I wanted only one mole of ammonia, I could scale this down the same way, divide everything by two. Let's take a look at another example where stoichiometry is going to be useful. Here we have the same reaction, nitrogen and hydrogen giving ammonia. Question asks, how many moles of ammonia are produced when four moles of hydrogen gas react with an excess of nitrogen gas? This term here, excess, means there's plenty of nitrogen and I don't need to worry about there not being enough for the reaction. Now this question is starting me off with four moles of H2. That's my starting information. That's what the problem gives me. Four moles of H2, of hydrogen gas. And I want to know how much ammonia. So I'm looking for NH3. I'm looking for how much ammonia. From the equation, I can see that there are three hydrogens for every two ammonia. So three H2 for every two ammonia. And I can make use of this ratio. This ratio I just wrote here is what we call a mole ratio. It is a ratio of the number of moles of each substance in a balanced chemical equation. Now I can use this mole ratio similar to the way I use dimensional analysis. So I can take this four moles of hydrogen and I can multiply it by a fraction. And on the bottom of the fraction, I'll put moles of hydrogen because that's what's going to divide out. Divide out, divide out. And I want moles of ammonia, so I'm going to put that on top. Now from this, I know what numbers go with those units. Two moles of ammonia and three moles of hydrogen. So I have my math set up now. Four times two divided by three moles of ammonia. That's going to give me 2.67 roughly, moles of ammonia, 
produced if I start with four moles of hydrogen. This is the essence of stoichiometry. I'm figuring out how many moles of one thing is related to moles of another thing. And I use this idea of a mole ratio to figure that out. Let's look at one more example of how to use a mole ratio. Here we have an equation that shows aluminum reacting with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. The question asks how many moles of oxygen will I need to completely react with 12 moles of solid aluminum? That's over here. So these are the two quantities I'm interested in, aluminum and oxygen, and I know the ratio is 4 aluminum to 3 oxygen. That's my mole ratio from this equation. Now I'm starting with 12 moles of aluminum in the problem. And I want to figure out how many oxygen. I'm interested in this one. How many oxygen? So I'm going to set up my fraction again, this sort of dimensional analysis. And I know that there are 4 moles of aluminum for 3 moles of oxygen. And that's from this mole ratio right here. That's where I got this 3 and 4 from. So I've got my work set up. 12 times 3 divided by 4 is going to tell me that I need 9 moles of oxygen to completely react with 12 moles of aluminum. Now, these last few examples have introduced us to stoichiometry in terms of using moles and how to use a mole ratio. However, we never actually measure quantities in terms of moles. Moles are something we calculate based on actual laboratory measurements. So in the next video, we're going to look at how to do stoichiometry with actual measured values or measured quantities.